the match we've been waiting for for the winner of the 1996 Japan Cup. Danny Wiseman on the left, Steve Wilson on the right, our two youngest players, Wilson at 28, Wiseman an old man at 29. Well, Danny certainly has more experience. However, Steve Wilson's been bowling great this year. He won the Quaker State Tournament earlier in the winter, so uh, this certainly is a toss-up. Wiseman flushes that first hit, right? Solid in the 1-3. A little bit better start in the last match. Yes, and it really is important, especially in, the, in a title match, to get off to a good start, to build some confidence early. That way you don't have to try and, you know, dig deep at the end to figure things out. Our first look at Steve Wilson, right from behind. Kind of an unusual style. But the same result. Nine pin goes a little late. Good ball. A good opening shot for Steve Wilson. Maybe just a little slow on the speed, and that's why the ball hooked in as high as it did. But the nine pin, as you said, Mike Durbin, did fall over. And our match is all even after one frame. See that he's 28 years of age. 5'10", only 155 pounds. So not a big guy. And he tends to get his swing a little bit away from his body, but he does it the same every time. So I don't think he should change. A little bit light. The 2 8 10 was up there for a split second. Wound it, up with only the 8 pin. It really was a very good break, Mike. He he had the 2 8 10 standing. The 2 and the and the 10 fell at the last moment, as you said. Leaves him with a relatively easy spare. Shouldn't have any problems shooting the 8 pin. At the 8 pin. A little off balance. Checking that approach. But he converts it with no trouble. Making sure that he can slide at some point in the approach. Danny Wiseman with the opportunity to uh, take a quick 10-pin lead here. We should mention that the winner of this match is going to get 50000 second place 25 .5. So a difference of $24,500 for this one match. It's a very good prize fund here, and it's a very prestigious tournament for all the players as they come to Japan. Uh, Danny, with an unfortunate break there, I don't know if he's stuck on that shot, but he just he didn't, he didn't like the way that ball was delivered. Well, he heard us talking about the money, and he threw it high. Yeah. He's, he's going to give it an early choke? I don't think so. Real early, yes. Uh, switches ball. is going to go straight, try and hit the three pin on the right, and bounce it into the ten. Good spare shooter, Danny Wiseman. And there's why you should throw it straight at those spares. That's exactly right. That ball actually hit the three pin pretty flush, but since he threw it straight with the harder ball, he got enough deflection to get the ten pin. Back to the left lane. Both players even through two frames. Both working on spares. Looking for title number seven right here. Lucky, he hopes. And lucky right there. He carries that 10 pin. Almost a ringing 10. Just enough of the, of the six pin hit the bottom of that 10 pin and knocked it over. Steve Wilson now up. Third frame, right lane. Didn't uh, do real well on this pair. Only a 216 average. Yeah, but he's not thinking about that right now. He's thinking about winning this tournament. And with shots like that, Mike, he's going to be in very, very good position to do just that. As you can see, Steve, from a side view, shoulder high, gets a little bit strange right towards the end, gets the ball a little bit further away from his ankle than I'd like to see. But he has been very successful, and I wouldn't suggest him changing it. Kind of a whip-like action with that wrist coming down through the ball. Right. You wouldn't want to teach this kind of style, but uh, very successful, and, and uh, he's doing very, very well with it. And flushes two in a row to take a quick 10-pin lead over Danny Wiseman. However, if Wiseman can strike right here, he'll even the match right back up. He's in the fourth frame, trailing by 10. Takes that deep breath every time. Kind of a good tip for our audience out there. Yes, it, it helps. It helps to get him ready and to relax him. Stays within his routine. There's the result. We've seen that a lot today. Even you can, match. And you can hear you can hear somebody somebody back there is really rooting for Danny Wiseman. He's a, a, one of the one of the American bowlers because uh, you can hear somebody speaking English back there every time Danny gets up to throw a shot. And some of the American players there. We can see John Mazza right over there. He was the uh, sixth place finisher here. Yeah, he just did miss our telecast. There's Dave DeEntremont, Mark Williams, 
a lot of the Americans stayed to watch this telecast, and I, I think they're being treated to a very exciting final. And Danny Wiseman taking a re-rack right here. Evidently didn't like to look at it. Once all the pins right where he wants them, so the, all ten will go down. Not and you need that. You need to have the good rack so you can have the the right frame of mind to get up and make the good shot. Something, something was not right in that delivery, and I believe what it was is that Danny Wiseman just got short with his delivery. Now we'll see the ball coming into the coming into the pocket. It hooks way high. Fortunate just to leave the 6'10. That was a shot where Danny did not get the ball out onto the lane far enough. He set the ball short, as we say. When you set the ball short, it starts rolling early. Usually, almost, almost crossed over. Yeah, if he'd have thrown it, you know, that's the thing about bowling. If he'd have thrown it a little bit worse, he might have gotten a Brooklyn strike. At the 6'10. Oh. That was trouble all the way. The breeze knocked that 10 pin over. He's looking down at the approach as if he's stuck on that delivery. But whatever it was, it almost cost him the spare. He just barely got the 10 pin to fall. As you can see, Steve's wife, Sherry, in the background sitting next to Randy Peterson. Does she have her eyes closed? No, I think she's praying. And that's the reason why the result happened, just like she wanted it to. Another strike on a crossover. I don't know what knocked that five pin over, but it's a turkey, turkey, and he leads in this match right now by 12 pins. And if he strikes here, he can bump it up to 22. You know, he threw that last shot. He's sort of shaking his head right now, trying to, trying to really forget about it. He was very fortunate. He should be very, very pleased. But right now, what he needs to do is take advantage of that extremely good break. If well, he could strike here. Yeah, you got to look at it as a demoralizer shot, and he did. When you pump that good strike on top of the fortunate one, it is a demoralizer to your opponent. Well, here's the good shot he threw on the left-hand lane, and you can see it coming right into the pocket, no problem. He sort of made a sandwich with two good shots and one bad one. Well, he'll take that any day, and so will any professional bowler. Wiseman back on the right lane, and leaves the soft 10 ball just a little bit further behind he's down by 23 with a spare conversion yeah he needs to needs to make this spare and then start striking because right now with the way that Steve Wilson's throwing the ball plus that great break he got he's gonna be very tough to catch well anytime you start running out of frames and you're 20 some pins behind you know a little light goes off in your mind time to shift gears here yeah time for Danny Wiseman to start striking can't let Steve Wilson get too big of a lead Although if Steve, you know, when he comes back on that lane that he threw the Brooklyn on, he's going to have to make some kind of an adjustment. You know, it could be a very interesting.